What if in your mid-50s you can be your strongest, most creative and daring self? That's what my guest Marjorie Goodson decided to prove to the world. Welcome, I'm Barry Kibrick, and Marjorie Goodson's on a mission to show that life truly begins when many feel like winding down. Her most gorgeous picture book and the philosophy behind it will literally blow your minds when you see the artistic photos from her most creative mind and body. Marjorie, it is a pleasure to have you here. This is a unique book, and I am very much looking forward to sharing this with my well, audience. I am honored to be here. I just, I'm, I'm thrilled that it's featured in such a great way, and I love your show, so thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. I want to start off, I want to let, the, first of all, the viewers know that this is literally a picture book. It is. There are some words, and we are going to discuss <laughs> those words, but this Few is words. a picture book. Yes. And as we talk, they'll find out exactly what this is a picture book about. But what I want them to know and you to know, I'm not going to mention specific pictures necessarily, but as we talk, they're going to see all the different pictures. Not all of them, because okay. some of it's, I want to let my audience uh, know, some of it is a little R and rated, yes. or maybe even close to X. But <laughs> this is a G-rated show, and we will show the G-rated right. pictures, yes. okay? But you do start with these words, this is what I know. Yes. And then you give a list. Yes. And I'm going to pick out some of the things in that list that I want to hear more about, okay? Great. And I want to say one more thing that's interesting about this. What I think it is is the juxtaposition of your age. And I'm saying that never no, that I would no, ever. No, no, please. Because that's the premise that of is, this. I'm very The premise fine with is that. that, you know, you are in your mid-50s. Yes. And this book is not touched up. You had makeup and stuff like that, yes. but there's no photo. And it's pretty amazing. And the mission is to show people what they can do even later in life. Absolutely. That was, that was very important for me to show myself as I am the woman that I am today, that I, it was never about being younger. It was never about recapturing my youth because I never felt that I had the empowerment that I do, that I do now as a mother, as a woman, as a human. Um, in my 20s, I was finding myself. In my 30s, I was a young mom. And, and now in my 50s, when my daughter went off to college, that was when I felt, okay, I can do this. My experience and all of that put me right, right here. And so I'm very proud of the age and, and where we are in the middle of you know, being, being 55. Oh, so you're setting me up because the first, one of the first words you use when you describe actually what I know is I'm a work in progress. Yes, absolutely. And I think we're all works in progress. And I don't like that notion of this sort of you know, fragmented, I'm going from here to this stage to that stage. I think it's just a blend of whatever you want it to be. It's your life. You get to set the stage. You get to make it whatever it is that you want it to be. And these sort of outdated notions of age and, well, I'm 50 now and welcome to the club of retirement or something. I'm like, just chuck it. Get rid of it because it's nonsense. Another favorite word of mine, and in fact, my son and I use this He's a filmmaker, and oftentimes one of his main goals in creating the films that he works is to use this word, visceral. I'm oh, visceral. Very much so. Very much so. I'm very much hands-on feeling. Even when I talk about something, I, I feel it, and I, I just, um, I think people use um, and see things in different ways. My um, ex-husband used to say he was very auditory. And I'm like, I'm very much about touching, feeling, texture. And when I wrote this book, or not wrote this book, but, but created the book, I wanted people to have an experience as they opened the pages and felt the pages. As much as it was about the pictures, it really was about the touching and the seeing and, and for them having their own personal experience. And by the way, it does open very different. I've noticed it when I went through it. The Thank page you. turns differently. It's not like a regular book. It lays yes. flat so that the pictures yes. come. It is really very uniquely done. Thank you. Thank you. It was very important to me that people had that sense and I wanted them to take their time. And, and the, the man that I worked with, 
who did the book layout, we talked about that extensively about, um, I don't want the pictures just to be like willy nilly, but that it really had to be a, a moment and take a moment. It does, and it lays out that way yes. too. That was, I don't know how you did that. You know, that'll that's be the, the printer. secret. <laughs> uh, okay, that's the printer. That's I the know. printer, but, but, they, but they offer that to us and they said, well, this is how, if this is what you want, because I really wanted to be as much in the real world as it could possibly be. Well, you talked about visceral before. You talked about the feel and touch, but you actually say also that you see and feel in colors. And yes. that's pretty obvious in the book as well. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, f I feel very, um, exactly, I feel rich colors and uh, velvets and um, earthy textures and like sometimes uh, if I talk about wine, you'll talk about and certain fabrics and all of that. So I do. I'm very much uh, a Libra, there I were, would say. There's a, a curious thing I noticed when, when looking, and I looked at every picture at least two or three times oh, because it was just you. that. It, it was fun to go back and forth. Thank you. There are some, th th but what, what's so unusual is they're so different. Usually there's a theme or something I can relate to in the pictures, and I say this as a compliment. They're so different. Some of them are strikingly erotic. Some of them are strikingly almost as if they're industrial. Yes. Some of them are extremely poetic and ballet. And then there are some that are almost like you're poking fun of yourself. Yes. There's certain pictures where it's you're just kind of like being a little kooky. I don't know what else to a describe kid. it. I'm being a, a kid. kid. Is that what well, it I'm is? Well, I'm being very much, very much me. I, I wanted to really uh, capture that element. What you're talking about is the um, trampoline shots where I was jumping and just being kind of crazy because I think you can't just be one note. And um, as a dancer, we're always taught you can't just bring one style of dance. You know, everything is fluid. It's, it's uh, aggressive or it's passive or it's um, beautiful. So I felt that I really wanted to capture all the elements of myself. So thank you. And That's you right. said dance. Dance is the primary driver in yes. this book and yes. uh, you've been dancing as a very young person yes. but it seems that you're admitting even though there's a, maybe a, an ache or a pain a little differently or not even an ache or a pain but maybe just a little adjustment on how you may make a movement or whatnot that you're really now stronger than ever and that it looks like from what I've been you probably dance as good now as ever. I feel that I do. I feel like I'm I'm a I'm almost a better dancer, even though physically there might be things that I can't do that I could do when I was in my twenties. But um, I think I bring a much more sophistication to my dancing, just based on my age and what I've learned about myself. So yeah. Now, there was one or two. I'm going to mention one that of the way you describe yourself that I really would never have known from the, if I didn't read those words, you could not get this from the book. Okay. And that was when you said, I worry. It seems that worry is almost something that you seem fearless. So, well, now, and by the way, I realize that fearless doesn't mean that you don't have fear. It means yes. that you have fear and you <clears throat> go through it. So maybe that's where the worry comes from. I don't know, but it, it, it seemed like I can't imagine Marjorie worrying. <laughs> that is so funny. And I feel like my father's about to come right up out of his grave and just be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> because I, um, I do, I worry. It's a, it's a, it's a part of my, my nature, and I think it's also a driving force behind me. And I think it was really one of those things that when I wrote this, and it was very much um, something that came out of me very quickly, and I wanted to, when I wrote This Is What I Know, that I just started regurgitating all the things about myself in a very fast manner, like what comes up, and it was like, I do this, and I'm this, and I'm this. And I do worry, I'm a mother, I, I worry constantly. And like you said, it is, a, it is pushing through your fears. And as someone once said, Marjorie, we don't care if you have butterflies. We just want to get them flying in formation. Oh, what, oh, say that again. I want my viewers to hear that that's a great line. We don't care that you have butterflies. We just want to get them flying in formation. And so that's sort of how I approach it, that you're gonna have your fear. I have my fear, it's like my, my friend, and I have my doubts, and I go, okay, come on. And we kind of march through it, 
And I think you need those things. I think they push you and they allow you to overcome. And for me, that's been a huge part of this journey is just more so than the book and the physicality and the pictures, but this personal journey of overcoming my fear to actually do this. There's only one word that you use twice in this list. I don't even know if you were aware of it. Maybe you are when I'll tell it to you now. You use the word, I'm passionate, and you use it in the list twice. Were you aware of that, or did that just come out? I, I d was not aware of that. I had no idea. But obviously, I, I feel very passionately about that. So yes, I'm very passionate. Yeah, I was, I was, oh, I was very funny. I'm looking at this. You I, mentioned I didn't that know word that twice. Barry, thank you mentioned you. that word twice. And, oh, and really? by the way, yes, you, I can, I'll show it to you oh, afterwards. I love it. I'll I show love it to it. you. And you, and I do think, though, it, I thought it should you have been really mentioned. You really did read this book. Oh, I, I, I really, <laughs> Yay, thank but you. you know something? I, I think that there, I almost thought it might have been a psychological thing that you didn't even catch. That's why I asked oh, you I, about that. Oh, I didn't that. catch it. Because the truth is, that's what this book is. It's passion to the nth degree. Yes. It's passion in how you uh, message the book. It's passion on all levels. Yes. I mean, it's what I love, it's what I know, it's, it is, it's about acknowledging my passion too for the first time, becoming an artist and acknowledging the passion that lives inside of me about art, about life, about being a mother, about, you know, I always say that passion is not necessarily, it's like my love torture because passion is, it drives you, it compels you, and you really have no choice in it. It just like pulls you. It's like going over the, the waterfall, and you're like, well, here we go, because I have no choice. I really feel like I have no choice. Well, you know, you said torture. The other, <laughs> no, wait a minute, don't, don't laugh, true. but the no. other word for passion is torture. I know that sounds funny, but that's what the passion of the Christ means. So when they use passion wow. that way, wow. it's the struggle or the torture. The and torture. in a certain strange way, if you're going to live your passion, sure. you are going to face many torturous, struggling moments. Absolutely, yeah, and, and I, I, uh, I call it my love torture because I love it desperately and it tortures me desperately because I feel like I just don't have a choice in it. And um, you know, when I, my body, I wake up in the morning, I'm just like, oh my God, this, that, and the other. And yet I'm, I'm back at it because that's what I have to do to feel complete and whole as a as a human as an artist I told you and a I, creator I, oh as a creator well that's I think because this really takes full creation because it's more than just one form of art that you're using here you're using muscles strength dance color uh, contrast starkness you name it whatever you want <laughs> no it, it, it really you. is it's, it's a number of Thank different you. things but there's a line and this is not in the book but I, I, I as I said of course, there were only those lines. I had to look up a few more things no, about you, great. and I wanted Thank this you. one that, that I, I wrote this now twice, and I did it consciously. All in, not all over. Yes. I think that's a great line, and Thank I read you. you say that. I saw Thank you. you. I, I read you say that. I saw, <laughs> I, I read that you said that, and I, I love that. I want to go a little further into okay. it because it's, it's kind of an interesting concept that I also believe in. Right. Um, well, for me, it. I, first of all, I've always loved those kind of, the way it sounds, all in, not all over. I love to take something and I guess you would call it an alliteration and, and, and but I wanted it to be my, my, um, something that I, I said. And I always felt like people were saying, oh, it's all over or I'm at this age and it's all over. And again, like I said, you can take it and you can just throw it by the wayside because I feel like I'm standing here right now in the best shape of my life, emotionally, physically, spiritually. So for me, it is all in, like all in, not all over. You gotta jump in, you gotta jump in with, with your heart and your head and your mind and your body. And you know, as a dancer, obviously my body, but um, and, and just get rid of this notion of, of age because I think creativity has, has no rules. It has no boundaries. We are we're free to do whatever. If you look at it, even on, on all spectrums, not only in art, 
if we can draw out of the lines, as they say, yes. in everything, yes. who knows what we're going to uncover. That's how everything, by the way, is discovered, is I when totally you don't go you. by the rules. Right. You seek out that thing that's not a rule or right. a regulation. Or it's the, the mistakes. I, I paint, and I said oh. some of my favorite, and which is one of the reasons, and well, we can jump to my, the book that I'm doing now, but um, with paint, I always started out as a right in the lines, and then as now, I just take paint and I fling it. I, I don't even want to think about it because I love the mistakes. The mistakes to me are my, I call them my beautiful mistakes, and I love that because it's just, here they are. It's so organic, it's so. You know, I had a great artist on my show, Melanie Rothschild, and her oh. book is The Art of Mistake. Oh, really? And, and be, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing because some of her greatest art happened when she noticed the paint dripping. Yes. And the paint drippings she caught, and they're amazing. Right. And it became her now, her, her style, thing. her thing. Her thing, sure. Yes, I remember the first time I did a painting, and I walked across the canvas, and my paintbrush dripped these red dots. And at first I was like, ah! Oh! And then I was like, ah! Oh! And that was sort of the end of it for me. And I remember my whole mind shifted in the way I wanted to create and approach art. You, you say, I, I read these words by you as well, and again, and I want to really discuss this in depth. Okay. There's always tomorrow, there's always an opportunity. That's very easy said, but because I have friends of our, uh, around our age, I mean, you know, within that time span, and they're feeling right now that there is no tomorrow already. It's a very disheartening thing. They feel that, you know, the back nine has already been played out. Right. And not all of them, don't get me sure, wrong. Sure, no, of but course. Though, and I feel there's an empathy that I can say, I could feel that, but I can't. I almost have to go back to a sympathy. I feel sympathetic to it, but I can't empathize with that. It feels to me that I'm just starting. Yes. And, and I, that beginner's mind is so important. And throughout your book, throughout the words, throughout the art, you really do have what's known as the beginner's mind. Well, that, that's, that's, I, I love that, I love that um, the way you, you phrase that, because I, I, I agree. I think it was, for me, a beginning, a new beginning. I would have to say a new beginning for me, a new chapter, because when my daughter went off to college and I was really looking for something to, to do with my life again. And so, and it was really as a way to not miss her because she went off to college and I thought, you know, dealing with the empty nest syndrome. And so I threw myself back into the world of ballet and jazz, which I really love, but, but mostly ballet. And I thought, this is gonna be my time. I really want to, I've raised my daughter. I want this to be about me. And not really knowing about a book at that time. It only came about organically because I had created these coffee table books or coffee table albums for my daughter, who's a beautiful equestrian. And when I saw them completed, I thought, oh, maybe, maybe one day I'll, and I sort of shelve that idea, I'll do something like that for dance. But it was really nothing more than just kind of a like a ch. And then as I got more, I was about two or three years down the road with the dancing. And that's when I decided to, to create this, this coffee table book. And um, even then it just, I didn't even really know what it was gonna be. It just, you know, it evolved. It evolved into to so much more, but it was just baby steps. You know, now I look back and I thought, had I, I'm, it's evolved into a huge production. But in the beginning it was just, I was kind of like, oh, I think I kind of want to do some art. I think I might tiptoe, I tiptoed into it. But once you did, though, you say you then realized the urgency of it. There did seem to be as you started to tiptoe, yeah. but then you you went all in, not all over. You I went, went all in. I went on. I went all in, and it was the first time. I'm going to cry when I say this. Sorry, but I'd see myself as an artist. Sorry. It was through the. Sorry, it's very passionate for me. Um, the photography of um, Andrea Radatoyu, and she took a couple of photographs of me, and we had done it our first day with Torsten Witt. Excuse my tears. Please, I mean, they're beautiful as you are. Uh, thank you. And 
I saw myself on, ca not on camera, on, behind these photographs, and it was the first time that I took myself in as an artist. And it was, it just was a game changer for me. And I think that people, that was when I, I first realized that you have to um, try to discover your art and give yourself an opportunity and a chance. And I realized that there was no turning back. At that moment, I was like, wait, who is that girl? And they were like, Marjorie, that's you. And I was like, wait, that's not me. And they're like, oh, yeah, it is. And my whole world opened up. And then it was like, OK, now I have license to, to go forward. You see, just by that and the emotion that just came out, <sighs> you gave all those people I was talking about who feel that when they reach a certain time, it's no. over. No. It's not. It's not. In fact, you even say <sighs> here that you couldn't have done this earlier. You no. couldn't have been this gritty, this edgy, this because you didn't even have the wisdom prior to it. No, and I, I couldn't have. To, and it's hard to try to, you, because you don't want to sound preachy when you're speaking, especially to a friend. Uh, no. That, But yet, you want people to know that, folks, just know that there is that tomorrow that you can if you want to tomorrow or today or in the next 10 seconds just go out and try something do anything right. it's not the end it's the beginning yes and and and, and just to kind of further what you're what you're saying is that it, it it is hard in the middle of your life and that i think if people are waiting for like the motiv i call it the motivational fairy to come down or like that, that moment of when it's just right. It's never gonna happen. It's just never, ever gonna happen. And you have to find it in the middle of that sort of chaos, chaos or fear where I think that's, that's what makes it so great because it, when you get to the other side of it and you look back and you go, wow, I did it in space bite of it and that's where the growth happens so even if it's if even if you want to go back to school or you want to do art I think what the more important thing is that you as a human will grow and that is a gift beyond anything that you're even looking to do beyond this book is the growth that I've done as a human and there's no turning back now now I'm like hungry for it and you know, I want to let people know something else that's somewhat <laughs> inherent. <laughs> my, te my tears are like, oh, oh. But so, right. you're beautiful that oh, way. Please don't you. worry about it. But the other thing is, I want people to know that they don't even have to do anything different. They could just re put a new lens on their eyes and see already what they have. That's something that I almost got the sense that went hand in hand with what you did was that you finally looked at your life with a different lens. You had a new perspective. Nothing had to change, but you had a new perspective. I love that. I love that saying because it's a great way to put it. You're absolutely right. It's just changing your focus, changing the lens. And I often have said to Andrea, who, who did the photography and just so amazing, and I said, through your lens, I became the artist that I've always wanted to be and the person that I've always wanted to be because she allowed me to see through with, with through her focus but I know what you're saying through your own personal focus and I totally agree you don't have to shift and do all these big grand gestures I think just saying I want I want to do this and I'm willing to do this and I'm going to take the steps necessary towards doing that. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know what kind of animal this is going to be. I'm just going to take those first few baby steps to getting there. The willingness to kind of go to that place like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's like, come on. And then you do it. It's magic. It's We're absolutely magic. We're almost out of time, but with magic, no, there's also... No, 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 no. <laughs> I do think there's yeah. one more thing that I, I don't want to leave out before we go because, and this was part of it as well, for me, it's about the intention. And I think once you find that intention, as I said, you don't even have to do anything else. You can just shift your perspective. But it's that intention with intent. Yes. Um, exa exactly. You have to know what it is that you what you want 
and 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 have an idea of where you're going with that. I mean, intention is is everything. And but I, but at the same time, I know as a dancer, I don't like to necessarily put too much intention on something because I like to sort of let it breathe and have its own its own life and then it'll become what it is. Well, not it became what it is. Oh my Our god. Time is up. Barry, thank, thank you thank so much. Oh, I really thought what a great chat. Uh, it's my pleasure. Enjoyed thank you it. so thank much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my pleasure, Marjorie, and thank, thank you. you all. Now before Marjorie leaves, I would like to leave you with this quote by Marjorie Goodson. Embrace your fear. Embrace the doubt. Because if you're waiting for the happy fairy, as she said earlier, and the motivational fairy to come down and sprinkle dust in your eyes, it's never happening. I'm Barry Kibrick. Between our fears and our doubts lies just the right amount of motivation. Embrace it and things will happen. Thank you, much. Thank you, Barry. Thank you so much. My pleasure. This is to connect with Barry, like him on Facebook and follow him on Twitter at Barry Kibrick. And to contact Barry directly, view past episodes of Between the Lines, and read his weekly blog, visit us at barrykibrick.com.